Okay, folks, in this episode, I'm going to try something a little different. We are currently at San Francisco International Airport at gate Delta 14. And what I'm planning to do here is uh, show a full flight from San Francisco to LAX and execute a Cat 2, Cat 3 auto land on runway 25 left, Los Angeles. Now I use a little, I do use the checklist, but I use a slightly different procedure. It's more of a flow. I like to get the ground fire test out of the way first. Now one thing I check before I turn on the hydraulic is make sure the gear level selector is down, the flap is selected up and it, it uh, matches. And I check the green lights upper and lower for the gear. And then I turn on the uh, electric hydraulics so that the walk around can uh, inspect for leaks as well as the fuel pumps. I also turn on the wheel well light so they can see what's going on in there and of course the position light is on so that the ground personnel knows someone in the aircraft and I turn on the trim air so I don't forget it. And of course check the log books, check the circuit breakers, check the paperwork, make sure it's good, make sure that's down logged, fire extinguisher, fire axe, circuit breakers, emergency escape equipment, then I jump in the seat. All right, ground power is available, it's up and running checks out. Let's go ahead and align. Make sure we're up to date. and locate. Park at Delta 14. And we're 
we're going to Kilo Lima Alpha X-Ray, LAX. We're going to be Southwest Airlines, flight 593. And our route will be Mickey to Tilt, there'll be no transition. Tango in the Anna Lima Lima Tango. And we'll look at the wind conditions. San Francisco INTL information Papa. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind 350 at 6. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 500 few. 2,500 scattered, 20,000 broken, temperature 20, 2.14, altimeter 3000, arriving runways 01 right, 01 left, departing runways 01 right, 01 left, advise on initial contact you have Papa. Okay, I want to remember that, so what I'll go ahead and do, I'm going to make this a little more interesting, I'm going to wear two hats today. I'm going to try to play air traffic controller and pilot at the same time. Okay, we have information alpha. And we're going to contact uh, clearance delivery on 118.2 and then ground on 128.121. Excuse me what it is. No, 121.8. Okay. 118.2 for clearance delivery. Power will be on 120.5. Well, I'm not going to actually select radios. I might just set up the first bunch, but I'm going to be flying at the same time. But I have a, just, we'll just pretend. And then we're going to use uh, Oakland Center or 125.75, Oakland Center 134.55, probably Oakland Center or LA Center 126.35 or SoCal 128.15. And I'll just kind of rattle these off sort of in sequential order until we get down to the final approach would be 127.40. I'm not sure what it is. I have to look it up. And then, of course, the tower, south side, 120.95, ground 121.7 LAX. Okay, now that we have information alpha, another little gizmo. I forgot I had this. Uh, let's see if this still works. Bear with me. Delivery uh, MS 43 Charlie Super. Good evening. No. MS 43 Charlie Super. Now we're not actually getting San Francisco okay, ground. Uh, I'm going to have to turn the volume down on this. See if it works Charlie. down here. Um, no, you can expect runway 4 left. Uh, say again, number uh, 4 Charlie. You can expect runway 4 left for departure. I would expect 4 left for departure, number uh, 3 4 3 Charlie, thank you. I'll turn it down in here. Okay, let's try this. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay. Just to make it more interesting, a little bit of sound, background chatter. I forgot I downloaded that a while ago and I haven't used it. Okay, normally, based on what I'm listening to, they've been clearing them uh, via yeah, runway heading to 5,000. We're going to be taking off a one nine right or left, so that would change things a little bit. Now that we know that. No, actually, it doesn't really matter. The wind's pretty low, 347. I'm going to take off on 28. Normally, it's 28 right, and the rivals are 28 left. 
via Echo, Echo to Charlie. All the way to the end, we have to cross two runways uh, to a left and right via Echo. Then we turn right on Charlie, hold short one nine left, right, and then uh, we'll have to get permission to cross and then proceed all the way to the end to uh, hold short runway two eight right. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Departure. I've already got a fly uh, flight plan filed, and here is the departure. And we said 28 right. And we're going to be flying the offshore 2, no transition. And it'll be directed to Mickey. And then on the arrival, since I want to swing around and come in on the uh, south side, I'll be flying in on the. Uh, uh, Vector 6, uh, and select the ILS runway 25 left. Uh, actually, I'm going to vector this, but I'm going to say Trondo, which is a bit close. It's kind of tight. And of course, the Darby 1. And so we're going to Mickey to tilt. I have to tilt it twice. Uh, go to the legs. Uh, uh, so, uh, you notice uh, it says uh, vec uh, oh, intercept, no vectors. So if cleared as file, I'll be able to go to uh, VNAV L LNAV and just watch the speed. Clear Unlike looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm hoping to get a direct to tilts after Seagull, and then we'll just follow this all the way around. It's a pretty long approach, and most likely when we get to Seal Beach or get direct to Seal Beach, uh, we'll fly probably 070 down about six, maybe 5,000 feet. And they'll hook us around because there's a lot of traffic. <coughs> excuse me, that's in real in real life that's flying in a LAX. So coming in on uh, Trundo and just cutting everybody off is not likely. And we're going to simulate low visibility approach, which slows everything down. So I'm going to try to try to steer us around all that. All right, let's assume that the walk around is complete, and uh, we can shut this light off. And we can review this with the first officer. At least get this part out of the way here. Go to the legs page. Uh, I'm not really concerned about the. Uh, the altitudes. I've already checked it against the SID stars, and they are accurate. They're within range. The speed restrictions are still good. And we'll get more accurately after, after we activate it. All right, I'm going to go ahead, activate, and execute. If we're both satisfied. Now go over here to the... Uh, we're looking at 119,249, but let's say we don't know that. We're just assuming, looking at our uh, plan here to 119.0 estimated reserves 3.3, cost index would be 20, and we'd like 37,000. Now, since this flight plan is outdated. It's like 24 hours old. What I do is I go into uh, Active Sky. This is what it's going to throw at me. And I usually just enter top of uh, climb winds at TOC 190 and 32. And then on the temperature, if I don't know the ISA, what I can do is get the axle, which is minus 57, 
56. Lima 456. Tank. 56C Gyro. entered in the axle. File. Now to calculate 5, the. Now there's a formula for that, but I'm not going to do it right now. Let's well, see what it was on the day I followed this. Alpha, it was plus 9 uh, minus 48. Well, let's see if that's right. We go minus 48. C. Put that in the axle. We get an 8C calculated there. Pretty close. Plus nine. But I'm going to go ahead and put the actual minus 52. That's pretty cool. Is that minus 52 or minus 53? Oh, minus 53. All right, it's plus four. I'll go with that. Insufficient fuel, and that's because we have to order fuel. We're only down to 7.2, so we're going to go ahead and do that prior to boarding. Ground supply deck first disconnected and starting refueling. And you look back here, you can see him hooked up single point refueling under the right wing. That'll take a little while. So go ahead and clear that message. Now I go back to uh, payload. I'm expected to be 133,000 pounds of takeoff weight. I round off to 133,100. There are two ways you can do this. There's one in X. Let's see if I can find it. Um, takeoff performance. Let's see, it's runway. I think you got to select through here. Runway 28 right. Dry conditions. The winds. I look those up. 10 and 13. 551 advised, ready to copy. Ready to copy, Carol, 551. 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 Jet Outside air temperature is showing in centigrade 21C. And the uh, altimeter Q and H is 1060. Optimum. Uh, Takeoff weight 133100. Better that. Oh, I gotta look that up again. Ah. 186 Oh, come on, what the hell is wrong? Uh, Optima max, five degrees flaps. Any ice is off. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. If I had to select another page here, but apparently not. United 674, clearance to Newark. United 674, clearance. Record to Newark Airport via the Palmer 2 departure. Uh, as well. You can't really do it, but you can change flaps. AC's on. Auto. So you leave it on. Oh, normally you should get some kind of a runway length on that. That's why I don't like using this. I don't use this thing very often. So let's do it my way. Here's the way I do it. We're going to take off out of San Francisco 28 right. We're going to update the weather.
make sure that it's accurate. It's a much easier, quicker way. It's probably not as accurate. Okay, wind direction 310 to 13 plus 21. Ground to flight deck, fuel is all loaded up and you are good to go. Let's compare it to what we're getting. We request 09 left, full length for the departure. Okay, yeah, your flight is going to come out in about five minutes. 310. Copy. 310. 300. 300. 21. Okay, satisfied. And I see what I say that weight was 133. I'll round off the nearest hundred. I say 200. Flaps five. Select the right runway and go ahead and compute it. This will give you a selected temperature setting. And I usually pick the higher of the three. And this gives you a margin of 4,996 feet, 92.5% M1. It doesn't actually set that in the uh, when you have it set to auto. It'll probably be lower than that when I select this temperature. So let's go ahead and go to N1 limit. And I see it was 63. That drops us to 90.7. That's adequate enough. It's a long runway. I'm not going to go select. Now I can vary this. I usually go to climb one. Uh, Takeoff actual at 63 assume. Gives us 90.7. Now that goes down when you have the APU and bleeds on. So if you look at this, if I had the APU unit on, I could show that drop. Okay, takeoff. We're going to go flaps five. We're not loaded yet. So we'll go back to index. Now that we have fuel, we'll go ahead and turn this on. And I'll go ahead and go through my flow top down, starting from left to right. Check, 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 off. Film light works. Data flight recorder test, flight data recorders. Overspeed warning, left and right. Stall warning, left and right. It takes about six minutes for this to warm up. Then I move across here and go from top down, check all the guards and covers are closed, y'all have it's on. Check all the switches are normal on both. Auto control, check the lights dim. Uh, pumps are on, so I go cross feed check, make sure that that valve goes dim in about a few seconds, go back, make sure it's back on. Pumps are all on. Battery's good, ground power, we're looking good. Guard and close, guard and close, guard and close, light, guard and close. As expected. Brighter. I don't usually turn this one up. Normal, normal, guard and close, seatbelt signs on, test. That works, ground call is working, windshield wipers off, we're on the right ignition, this is good. Ah, window heats can come on now. Probe heats off, this test doesn't work, I've tried it. Any ice is off, and uh, engine hydraulics, electrical are on, four doors open. This doesn't work either, just pretend we test it. Differential pressure is zero and we're sea level, about 12 feet above sea level, so that checks zero on the climb rate. Make sure these are off. Uh, voice recorder is auto, temperature select. I'll leave it in auto. Trim air is on, I might adjust this on low left and low right. Ram air doors. Our circulation fans are on, overheat test. Most people don't ever bother with this. That checks, reset. Tax to auto, sometimes I forget to do that. APU bleed off, APU air on. And we're planning 37. So we'll set the wide out of 37, and it's about 128 feet above sea level, so that's close enough. Manual control, auto, and we always run. Actually, I can do it, test this, might as well. You can close the valve manually. You can open the valve. You see the little, this rise. 
and close it or opening it. Tango, Juliet, Sierra, Juliet. No, I'll close it again or I'll just go to and it'll close automatically. That's the alternate and this is the primary. All right, lights are set, rotating beacon on steady. Then I work my way down here. I go ahead and turn on the flight director on my side, co-pilot side. Expecting 5,000. Runway heading is 281. And I don't have my uh, BT speed yet. That's about all I can do up there. Oh, LNAV. BNAV I don't have. All right, from left to right, make sure the stopwatch is working. Reset it, reset the time, check the nose gear, steering is in the normal position, proper displays, you know. Check the annunciation lights for the autopilot and FMC. Light bulb check. Make sure everything's lit up. Yeah, 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 okay, it looks good there. Standby instruments are checked. Altimeter said, I've got this slave, so that when I dial this one, all of them go, because I'm just I'm too lazy to, you know, I just pretend. All right, fuel flow reset is good. We're set to auto for the N1 and 2. Let's get down here and read that. Speed reference in N1 setting. Uh, auto brakes, RTO, flaps from zero. I already checked all that. Check the status lights, check the systems. Make sure we've got 28 minimum. And this is the quantity. And if you turn the controls, they're actually working. All right, then we go to the engines page. Make sure this is where I'm going to be flying in this mode, and then I'll start in this mode. And we'll check our ground proximity warnings. Make sure all these guard and close. Give it a click. Oh, up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Terrain. Terrain. Oh, up. You can also check the uh, config warnings while you listen to that. Left throttle. Right throttle. That's good. Flaps up. Gear down. Stab trim. Normal. Locks. Already did a fire check. Idle cutoff. Already checked that. Brakes on. Already checked that. Yeah, I think I need a little more light down here. Turn that up. Another scan of the circuit breakers, both sides. Make sure that nothing's popped out since we supplied power to the aircraft. Uh, check the trim for neutral. Aileron and rudder. And this. Uh, this is set to auto. All right, and I'll listen to. This is annoying, but I always listen to the BOR. Let's right, see, Captain we're in San Francisco, be, so it's going to be 1580. I believe. Dial that in. I'm going to leave this ILS set up down here because that's what I'm planning on doing. This is. Uh, this is more about demonstrating the uh, auto land, but I just like to explain everything I do and while I do it. Hopefully answer a lot of questions. All right, 1580's coming in. We can hear it, we'll turn it way down. Uh, we're also gonna need, uh, on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and dial in uh, 1360. Put that up here. We'll leave both ILSs in the bullpen. This will give us an idea how far away we are from San Francisco or in case we have to turn back and also give me some idea when I'm in the vicinity of um, LAX. Okay, radios are set. Transponders are 2000 standby. I always make sure that it's set on 2000. In case it inadvertently gets switched on like that, it won't. Uh, cause a problem with air traffic control. Right now we're leaving them standby. Try to remember to turn that on. All right, that pretty much completes everything I wanted to do there. You go to this checklist and look at this guy here. This was the walk around, the chocks were removed. I checked the maintenance status. The battery's on, electrical, hydraulic pumps were on. Uh, the landing gear lever was down and the ship's library. Uh, 
That's where the logbooks are, insurance papers, and all that good stuff. Now, before start, we've got the inertial reference system set to nav gear pins. Uh, those are removed during the walk around. The light test we checked, the oxygen, and we can go ahead and do that now. I usually always forget that. Just press this little button down here. Now, there's supposed to be a little X that comes up here. This lights up, but you can't really see it. There's also an emergency press. And that is on the checklist. But I, I left the checklist off because it just keeps popping up. It's going to pop up anyway. And then we go to display switches. That was what we checked up here on the overhead panel on the left side coming down. Emergency exit lights are armed. The fast seat belt signs are on. Never arm those if you're refueling. Wait till after refueling for your arm. Those air conditioning packs are set to auto. Pressurization selector auto. Instruments were cross checked. And the uh, auto brakes are RTO. Hydraulics are on. Electric speed brakes down to 10. Parking brake is set. Trim stable. Uh, trim cutout switches. That's just down here. Is a enormous wheel well fire warning. That was the uh, part of the fire test and the cargo bay test fire warnings. Uh, where was I? Rudder trim, aileron trims free at zero. I just set them at, uh, usually supposed to be set at four. Five's fine. Uh, another thing I never did. I need to forget this. Up here. Uh, I go to flight. It's sort of an ultimate thing here. Or you can go to VHF-1. I'll leave it over here. I never checked that. Uh, there's a jump seat, Mike, you can uh, hook up. Which is behind, it's a seat that falls down, but we don't, we're not using that today. All right, parking brake, uh, wheel well fire, and radios, and transponder on standby. Radios are set, um, we're going to say clearance delivery, ground tower, and departure. Okay, the FMC is set. Um, MCDU, we're not quite there yet. We've got to still load. Okay, that's as far as we can go on that. Now, in the Zybo, this is pretty cool. What you can do, we'll open up the cargo doors and the service doors. And then we'll prepare. That's where the caterers and the cleaners come on board, put people to work, and we'll be ready to board in about 10 or 15 minutes. Baggage usually gets out a little earlier as people are checking in. They get the baggage on as soon as they possibly can in any air freight we're hauling. We're not hauling a whole lot of freight, it's mostly just baggage. Let's take a look at that. Uh, the payload, We've got about 417. In front 568 in the back. The passengers are supposed to include the baggage with it. This is extra freight. We can assume that. So that puts us at a payload of 26580, a zero fuel weight of 119249 actual. 14.3. I thought that was a little long, but that was what the flight plan called for. It is somewhat of an extended approach. You have to kind of step down, hook around a lot of traffic to party Los Angeles, and go way down below Seal Beach and come in from the south, west. And then I plan to hook right and uh, sort of an extended downwind about 25 miles out to try to find a slot where I can cut left and then cut left again to get in uh, to get in sea points because there's a long, long line. It's like a freight train of planes coming in from that direction from east to west. So no, uh, Trondo, Trondo's not really going to work. That's just going to cut a lot of people off. All right, so we've got that information. We're loaded. We've got a flight plan already hooked in here. We've got a briefing. Uh, it's showing runway one. Uh, yeah, you can use two a right? It's still available. And in Los Angeles, let's see what's going on down there. This thing usually gives you about two to four hours. Two four left, two five. Uh, yeah, two five left is fine. Once they're on ninety, heading two fifty one. So, I use the weather that's being injected in a simulator than what I than what something. Unless you're flying on a VAT sim, which I never do. That's a pain in the butt. But we can pretend. I got a little chatter going here, which I think is pretty neat. Uh, normally, I don't pick up clearance delivery, or we have a thing called uh, 
eight cars, which they don't have, you have this little screen down here where you can get their your clearances. Um, it's sort of a ground like email communication services. Or we could say that this. Let's pretend. We could say that uh, this would be a clearance from uh, clearance delivery. We could say that they're going to expect they're going to get the offshore two to Mickey to tilt to Darby one. Expect, expect Darby one. And that means we just fly runway heading at 281. We'll contact departure at 1,000 feet. They'll hand us off as soon as we blast out of here almost immediately. We'll be able to fly the LNAV, VNAV if they, if they give me the offshore two departure as filed. Uh, there will be no transition because it's direct uh, from Mickey to Tilt. Hopefully I'll be able to skip Mickey and go direct to Tilt, which I will do. And then uh, follow the Darby 1 procedures going in. Let's take a look at both of them. Details, details, details. All right, here's where we're sitting right now. Uh, this is just a freeware. Can't read that. It's 6 Bravo. That's the ramp location. We're at uh, Delta 14. So I would just tell them I'm at uh, Delta 14. Uh, request taxi. They'll probably give me Alpha to Echo, hold short, uh, to it left, right. Give me the first I'll, I'll report when I get there. They'll let me cross, make a right on Charlie, hold short again, and I get permission. Never, never cross the runway. It's a red light. It's just an automatic red light. Check in, say, hey, I'm on Echo. Short of, uh, depending if it's active, right, 2 8 left. They should have your transpot altitude off code. They should know exactly where you're at. There's a tower, they can see you. And then when you're cleared, and when you are cleared, always look both ways and make sure you're cleared across both. I stop again unless I'm clear for both. I still stop and look. Then continue on, clear left or right. Take Charlie. I like Charlie, it's a wider taxiway. And since so this is the one they're using for departure, it's kind of backwards in San Francisco. You would think they'd be departing on the left and landing on the right. But in this case, most of the time you hear them on, on a. Oh, what's the name of that? Uh, Sky, not Sky Vector. Well, whatever. It's uh, it's an online where you can listen. ATC Live. That's it. ATC Live traffic on the net. And uh, yeah, they land on this one here. I usually well, they're both the same length, so it really doesn't matter. Now, the only thing I don't like about it is a lot of ground traffic has to cross. Of course, the same when you land, you have to cross as well. If planes take it off. So either way, it's a problem. No simultaneous approaches are too close. So instead of Charlie 2, we'll go all the way Charlie to the end. And at that point, we'll hold. There's another hold point. If there's an ILS going on, we have to stop short here. But there are no ILS going on today. It's all visual approaches. So we'll just go. That's instructed. That's game plan one. Now, phase two, we're going to depart from like 2 a Hold ahead in 281 till we get up to Sneezy. Sneezy, if I go to LNAV, it's going to automatically turn to this heading and it's going to intercept the whammy. You don't have to set the VOR. I've done it both ways. It, it's not necessary. And then from there, it's going to it's going to fly this route here, 151, and at above 16,000, above 22,000. If I go VNAV to Mickey. And that's as far as we go. No transition. See down here. I should wind up all the way. There's Bennett. There's uh, San Marcos. There's Fellows. There's Morro Bay. I could have probably done Morro Bay. I could have done a Morro Bay transition on that. I could have put that in there and skip. But we're not. We're going to go by the plan. Mickey, this is what dispatch gave us. This is what ATC is expecting us to do. So then we have to go to the next phase over here from Mickey to tilt now there's a little bit of a jog here so I'm going to try to get a clearance direct to tilt so I don't have to hook right and hook left and we'll just follow this all the way down to our speed restrictions our altitude minimums uh, the FMC matches 280 knots one thing I could do go to the descent page and uh, it's not really worth doing this because it's so close but just for shits and giggles I'll enter that 280 Let's see, below two, below 10,000, uh, 280 knots, and then still be 210. There's nothing in between here that says you can't be going 240. But we can go ahead and do that just in case. 
240, 250, slash, and steep descent, ignore that. And uh, that's pretty much it on that page. Go back to the initial reference. Okay. So then after that, when we get down to Seal Beach, sometimes I usually get down to Darby, or maybe down to Bubba. I can get a direct from here to Seal Beach. And then from Seal Beach, we'll fly parallel out this direction, cut left and cut right. We won't just make a left and cut in and cut everybody off on final approach, because that's still only 10 miles out. It's hard to make that altitude when you use a VNAV. And I tried, I've done it, it's sort of ridiculous. On a, vi on a visual, yes, on a instrument approach, with low ceiling, say 400 feet or less, not recommended. Okay, then after that, you can see here, it's a long final. You got planes coming from this direction, that direction, coming off of here, coming off of Toronto, that would be me, cutting everybody off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fly out this way here. I gotta be mindful of the mountains, it's 5,000 feet. So I wanna maintain an altitude of around 7,000, clear to 5,000, coming down this way. And then cut an angle, if you look at the profile here. 7,000, 5,000, try to get out past gates, maybe down to Fuller, somewhere around this area here. And, or maybe maintain 9,000 all the way till established. Depends on how long they wanna extend me. Right. Well, I'm the controller, so I'll decide that. But you do have to be careful. There's some hills out here. So maybe they'll turn me this way, turn me that way, turn me this way, and find a slot, get in here. So that's the plan. And then, of course, when we're on the ground, normally what I do is I end up oh, it's coming on this runway here, making this turn off. I usually wind up on this one here, Hotel 6. Take Hotel to Juliet, hold short, cross one okay, and take Bravo down to Charlie 7 and come in like that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. All right, so let's do it. Stop working. Close these doors. Uh, we are unable to cross the uh, height at 250 knots. Uh, request to cross the uh, height at a higher speed. And we're still loading cargo. We'll go ahead and start the leg. I like doing this because of the noise. You don't have to run that. Then is there boarding? Oh, it takes about 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and power up the APU. Go ahead and get a pushback plan. Ground to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. And I'd like to get a clearance, if it's even possible, we'll just say we're on that radio, okay? And what I generally do is I go San Francisco, clearance delivery, this is Southwest 593. Information, I forgot what that was. Alpha. At uh, Delta 14, request clearance to LAX, S5. Already got that information. So I'll wait, wait. They'll say, okay, South um, San Francisco. That's not possible. Southwest uh, 593, clear LAX, S5 via the offshore two departure, no transitions. Expect runway 28 right, climb maintain 5,000 feet. Expect higher 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency will be on 135.10, squat 2375. Then I will say, Southwest 593, clear to LX, that's filed via the offshore 2 departure, expect runway 28 right, climb maintain 5,000, expect higher temperature after departure, departure 135.10, squawk 2375. So I'll go ahead and get that in. Then it will say, um, uh, Southwest 593, read back correct. They might give me the altimeter setting and say contact ground point eight when we're ready to push the start. And I'll say Southwest 593, ground point eight, ready to push the start. See ya. So now we'll go ahead and set that transponder code to 23. 75. Uh, I think we're now, we're two, seven, we'll go ahead and turn this to altitude on. We 
and she said we got a load sheet here so let's say we did get a load sheet everybody's getting on board so let's go ahead and shut the doors and then what I'll do is I'll welcome everybody on board I'm gonna leave the door open and then you can manually load this in or you can just click it and that's the actual Let's execute that, ignore that, and one limit will verify the weight. I'm at 63.49, gives me plenty of margin. Climb schedule one, that just kind of backs off the car a little bit. I don't, what I don't do is this. I don't do to cut back unless it's a night. Or, then I have the center. I can also enter that manually, or I can just pretend that I did that and then select the bugs. I don't really fly. These bugs are a little different. They're pretty close. Uh, we're going to go with these. So it is a sim. We'll go ahead and immediately set this to 140. That's the inch and out minimum. And on the, uh, I try to remember. I try to remember to set the minimum flaps up for traction speed on barrel, which is a thousand above uh, field elevation. Anything over a thousand feet, usually a thousand twelve in this case. And then I can go ahead and start. If I lose an engine, I can then start to pitch forward, and increase speed, retract flaps. So at a minimum speed of 140, that's also marked, and the bugs are marked. Okay, that's pretty much in order. Put the first officer's side on the legs page, and on my side is on the uh, takeoff reference page. Okay, so since everybody's ready to go, let's go ahead and turn this light on. Go ahead and go to internal power. Get some air conditioning blown. Unplug. I don't mess with the lighting. It's kind of dumb. Something that can be done from the back. Okay, then what I'll do is open that so I can hear what's going on back there, just for just for fun. Now, let's see. Oh, since I have this, let's see. Let's go to. Uh, I don't know if this is working or not. Ground frequency. Turn it off. It'll get any. There's not too much going on. Uh, it get, picks up any grass. It's not San Francisco ground. It's just the nearest 100 miles. There are too many. I tried to. Don't think. Okay. Uh, like. Ground and cockpit. Tow is driving up. Uh, before, before contacting ground for push and start, I want to be sure I'm ready to push and start immediately. In this case, it would be nose uh, east. Normally, we should go to heading select, just in case they change their mind. We are scheduled out of here right about now. All right, trim is set 5.25. Right about there. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. In the event 
Okay, as soon as I get a chance, I want to go ahead and contact ground and see if I can get out of here. San Francisco ground, Southwest 593 at uh, Delta 14, ready for push and start. We have information. Alpha. South of 593, push and start of roof. South of 593. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Okay, we can turn the packs off, get the pressure up. Oops, wrong direction. Pressure's up. Go ahead and turn number two. Ground. Start valve open. N2 spooling up. And at 25, I'll go ahead and inject fuel. Okay. Uh, watch that fuel flow and EGT rise. Watch the oil pressure rise. Oil temperature looks good. Check, make sure the light is out. Spar valve. Engine valve closed. At 56, you should cut out. As long as that doesn't go over 500, we're good. She just cut out. That's good. That's normal. Go ahead and load it continuous. Start number one. At ramp three now. Number one, spooling up, and two, and one. EGT, all pressure, as long as it stays under 5, we'll be alright, it's coming up pretty good. Operation complete, go ahead and set the parking brake. So right, I want to get Disconnecting tow, stand by. Not to continuous, alright, check generators, now most people don't do this, but I always look to see what it's putting out. Ground, well, that, we already know that's working. I checked the cycles per second. It's got to be right around 400. Yeah, that's good. Which it normally is. So we turn off the, uh, turn the APU off. APU bleed off. Go to normal. Or auto. Packs on. So we got pressurization in there. Release the uh, tractor. And it's pretty cool outside. We're going to put these on. It's some pitot heat. Never leave those on all the time. You burn them up. Especially in places like Dallas, Texas. Phoenix, Arizona, where it's over 90 degrees. Any ice off, all hydraulics on, all doors closed, make sure all lights are out. So is disconnected and bypass bin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Okay, that's done. I got to turn off lights on. I got to turn off the taxi lights. I'm not going to go anywhere until I'm cleared. All right, now that that's done, I go to, this is what I like to do. I go to engine up top. Systems on the bottom. Check flaps. We set the five. Trim is set. Watch them go down. That's a good thing about the config warning test because a lot of times I forget that when I start to taxi and I look down and say, ah, the flaps aren't set. You never want to forget that. Okay, flaps are down. Flaps indicate down, five. All right, brake is still on, so let's go ahead and make sure our controls work. You know, I like this display here because it shows that. Most most people don't have that, but uh, I think it's really neat. Now, when I push left, right, or right, right, you're supposed to hold the nose wheel tiller so it doesn't move. And that checks, and then we're done with that. We're done with that. Leave this page blank. I discovered that uh, if anything goes wrong, something will pop up here. Okay, now we got to contact ground and see if we're going to talk about taxi. San Francisco ground flight, Southwest 593. Uh, we're 
Quest Taxi. Now they know where I'm at. I told them before I was at Delta 14. That's sometimes the last guy. What gate were you? Uh, Delta 14. Uh, Roger. Taxi, let's go to the map. Taxi via... They know we're sitting right here. Via Alpha to Echo, hold short uh, 28 left. Uh, expect Echo to Charlie right, Charlie all the way to the end. Hold short 28 right. Okay, so I'll read back. Uh, via Alpha, Echo, hold short 28 left. And then I'll report again when I get there. Which they should know because I'm being tracked. Brakes release, then look down here. I never, I fail to show this. You advance the throttles about 50 to 70% and see if you get an alarm. No alarm. Taxi lights on, that's why I always turn them on because I forget to do that. Double check the recall, both sides, clear right. Clear right, left. Uh, Creek straight ahead. Put put on the ramp. Six Bravo. They probably would have said something like, out of six Bravo to Alpha. Look left. Look right. No traffic loaded today. I've got it turned way down. Brake test, good. And if you doubt where you're at, you can always look down at this. I just a cheat sheet here shows right where we're going. Okay, we look right, look left. We're gonna go left. We're gonna hold short this runway. Now that chatter you're hearing is some other airport. That's not San Francisco. That had me confused at first. I realized they don't have any. They only have like two. Now at this point, they might say, uh, oh, let's see, Southside 593, clear to cross runway 28 left, right? And then I'll acknowledge, uh, Roger, crossing 28 left and 28 right, 593. So we've been cleared to cross it. If you don't hear anything, you have to stop. And you gotta tell them what they just told you. Once I get across here off of Echo, I'll turn right on Charlie. Yeah, we are clear on crossing one for cruise. And I will not cross the whole short line. Oh yeah, I will because it's VFR and let's tell it otherwise. Right, clear left, clear right. You always look both ways. If you, even if you're clear, you always look. Always look. And double check the uh, altimeter, make sure it's current. Zero, zero, zero. And then we slow down. This is not marked very well. You can see Charlie right here. We're on Echo. Clear left, clear right. Gotta slow down here. Tap the brakes a little bit. And again, we're gonna hold. San Francisco Ground, Southwest 593, uh, holding short runway 19 or left. Southwest 593, clear to cross, 19 left, clear to 19 Crossing 19 left, 19 right, Southwest 593.
I see taxi around uh, 2022 knots once I get out away from all that stuff. Then I go ahead and turn on the weather radar. I like stations. Cold pilot can have the airport. I leave the waypoints off too much clutter. And I don't run uh, terrain radar because it's way too much clutter. So terrain on the right, weather on the left. At this point, they might say, let's see, uh, Southwest 593 Monitor Tower on uh, 120.5. Switching to Tower 120.5, Southwest 593. See you later. And then what I'll do, I can't do it right now. Yeah, I can. Let's see. Let's pick a tower frequency. So I'll check in with the tower, uh, San Francisco Tower, Southwest 593, via Charlie to 28, right. And they might say, uh, Southwest 593, roger that, uh, hold short to a right. And then I'll verify, uh, just to verify Southwest 593 to the end, Charlie, not Charlie 1. There's two of them down here. Charlie 2. Say again, Charlie 2 or Charlie. Just take it all the way to Charlie. Oh, 93. Roger that. Uh, let's see if it shows the ILS hold short line up here. I think it does. Does it? Now we could pull out right here, but that's a little bit too far down. Uh, with a flex temperature, it puts us a little bit too far beyond the threshold, so I prefer to take off down here at the end. On a recall. Now, this isn't really realistic there, but I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Put on the strobe. And then uh, put on the auto throttle. Put on a transponder, the TARA. This is stuff you do as you're rolling out. I never did see that whole short line. Weather radar. Oh, I thought I had it on. And then we're going to hold up right about here. And then there's a checklist down here you can go through. Config check. We did all this green light, standby, resident, secure, secretary, blah, blah, blah. San Francisco Tower, Southwest 593, holding short, number 28 right. Southwest 593, uh, line of weight. Uh, line of weight, 28 right, 593. Brace brakes, bring it on up. Look left, always look. Nothing coming. wait for our clearance to roll so we're going to double check a few things here make sure the trim's right the flaps are set see both signs are on all lights on everything's lit up we go ahead and put our wing lights on it's a little bit better visibility a final recall 
Okay, the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. American 2142, Roman Okay, now about this time they're gonna say uh, Southwest 593. When are the winds? I forgot. Uh, 310 and 13. Southwest 593, clear for takeoff, runway 25 right winds. Uh, 310 at 13. Sounds like 593, clear for takeoff runway 28 right. See you later. And then I'll go ahead and hit the 40%. Go to takeoff thrust. Push forward on the stick. Now see with the packs on it's running about 89.7. 80 knots. Relax the stick. Slightly. 400. And because I'm a lazy man, I want to go ahead and do some other things. I'll go usually at a thousand feet. I do this. And about this point here, I will hear something 593 contact departure on 135.10. 1, 1, so now we're going to contact departure. Southwest 593 uh -oh. with you at 1300 for 5000. Southwest 593, Roger, radar contact, climb, maintain 15,000, fly the SID as fly. Climb the 15,000, fly the SID as file. Start cleaning it up a little bit. Gradually. Good. Tune this up. And just slowly bring your flaps up as it passes. Since he said fly it as filed, I'm gonna go ahead. Okay, we're, we're, we're good. No nav be nav. And they said fly 15,000. So we'll set that for 15,000. And we'll neutralize the gear. Turn off the auto brake. Turn off the taxi light. Turn off the uh, retractables. And uh, go ahead and turn off the engine start valves. Check pressurization, differential pressure, make sure the packs are on, everything's going good there. We're going to make a left hand turn here, as filed. We check camera pressurization. Check the APU isolation valve, we contact the ATC, and then we have another checklist down here. We go down here and look at this here, air conditioning pressurization. All that's done. And then we'll go ahead and do this. I don't, this is to uh, clear the checklist. And double check the heading bug. Also, Southwest 593 maintains speed 250. Southwest 593 speed 250. So go ahead and do out this interview. If you don't, when you get past 10,000, it's going to speed up. They want to keep me at 250 to 15,000. Sometimes they, they usually remember to tell you that. I forgot. So let's go, let's see, what do we got here? Let's go to, uh, let's see if there's anything going on there.
Okay, at 10,000 feet, go ahead and shut off the lights. We don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need these. Turn off lights, we don't need the wing light. And then we'll check, uh, we don't have that on, we don't have this, we don't have this. Cap pressurization is checked, differential pressure looks good, cabin altitude is on the rise. And fast seat belts to auto. And then final recall. Heading bug is set. And we're still below 18,000, so we will not go to transition altitude TSDF. In the United States, all transitions, most of North America, is 18,000 feet. Okay, we just, uh, let's see, what are they going to say next here? Southwest 593, climb 18, fault level 230, we're going to zoom normal speed. Southwest 593, uh, climb 18, 230, we're going to zoom normal speed. So I'm going to go up above the transition. I'm going to double click the uh, V nav. That's going to let me speed up. I'm going to go to 23,000 as instructed, normal speed. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to tr standard since I'm going blow right through the 18,000 minimum. Now we're at normal speed and we're gonna climb first VNAV to 23,000. Now, since I know that I'm going to be landing on the south side, either 25 left or 25 right, what I can do is go into the fixed page. As I put runway uh, 25 left, they're both side by side, slash 5 miles, and then slash 10 miles. At 37,000, that means uh, 111, I believe. Throwing out to 37 times 3 is 111. I can also put 71, 111. 71 is the opposite of 251. That draws a line so I can see the final approach fix, or course. Let's see, outside temperatures plus four, clouds ahead. Let's go ahead and turn on the engine handy ice. Generators are putting out okay. So I'll go ahead and set this to standby power, put this on standby power. Pressurization looks good. Moving right along. Anytime the temperature gets, it gets within uh, plus or minus 10 degrees, that's a, that's a hot spot for ice, for, for engine ice. Now, the only time I generally turn on uh, wing anti ice is if I see visible ice forming on the or ice has been reported. Active Sky for the weather injector. Skymax Pro for the clouds. Here's another cheat sheet shows you where we're at. Find it. That's us heading for Seagull, and we're going to be in excess of 16,000 feet. Let's say, let's see, uh, Southwest uh, 593 contact Oakland Center 125.7. Southwest, uh, okay, yeah, 125.7. 
525 south of uh, 593. Seal it. And then we'll switch to that. See if we can get anything here. Let's check that one out. And then I'll check in. Oakland Center, southwest 593. Check it in at uh, 21,000 plus to 23,000. Southwest 593, we're around your climb, maintain climb level 270. Up to 270, southwest 593. So we'll keep climbing until we hit 27. That's good to have that pop up so you remember to set this to 10 degrees maximum bank angle at this altitude and speed. Actually, no, I think I'll leave that until I get above changeover speed, get into box speed. Also used set this to course that picks up the VOR CDI. I can center that if I wanted to on my side. See what happens when I do this. We are crossing a 172 from San Francisco. Heel. Keep that at 251 because I'm going to need to set that when I get there. Normally you set that on your course. If I wanted to expedite this climb, I would have to go to the climb page and sacrifice speed for altitudes. In order to do that, so I'd go to max angle or max rate. Let's try max rate. That brought us down to 250 IAS, 0.74. Now we're going to really start climbing. See the nose is going up, 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 up. That's going to, I mean, really send us up like a rocket ship. That's going to go. I don't want to do that. Back to Econo. That's a roller coaster ride. Okay, a level of 27. And let's see if they keep suspense. At this point in time, they might say Southwest 593, clear to flight level 350. Southwest 593 to 350. Just hit this again. And she'll start climbing back up. Remember, 350 is not our final out to. If we get stuck there, we got to change this up here to 
on a uh, actual Connell climb page, we're, we're shooting for 27,000. At Cypress, flight level 22,000 or above, which we are. We're now at 0.753, close to it. 288 knots. So it'll stay at 288 knots until it hits 0.753. This little banana bar here shows me when I'm going to hit 35,000. Now let's say since we're crossing Cyprus, they're going to go ahead and let us climb to 37,000, so you might hear uh, uh, Southwest uh, 593, clear to flight level 370, clear to 370, 593. Let's see, who else can we listen to here? Okay, let's say uh, Southwest 593, contact uh, LA Center, 128.15. And then we're at 416 for me, you're coming to 127.15. That's interesting. Whatever.
approach hello American 1162 out of 7300. American 1162 approach 5350, back to the final, send to maintain 3000. Send to maintain 3000, 350 heading American 1162. Uh, Let me go. Check. Break out 5944, come on, heading 320. Left 320, over here. Okay, I want to get a direct to uh, Southwest uh, 593, proceed direct tilt. Direct to tilt, 593. Now at this altitude, you won't get a whole lot of calls that just hand you from one facility to the next. Let's say we're far enough down the road, we can say uh, something like 593, contact uh, so-called 128.5. 128.50, something like 593, see you And then we'll switch frequencies and we'll check in. Or actually, I would say LA Center or Southwest uh, 593 with you at 37,000 direct tilts. The Darby 1 around. Southwest 593, Roger. Hey, Mark, we're at 177.5, 5,000, 0, 4,000. Got a 170 heavy, good evening. 5,000, 0, 10,000. 
Okay, you see this little okay, ring up here? That's about when you start to think about descending. Because this route takes us way out the route, we're still quite a ways out from the recommended uh, 138 nautical miles. Offshore two, Darby one. Hold a culty in case we screw up at two thousand two. Those on, haven't needed them on for a while. Stop at 471, contact center 125, point two seven. Two five two seven, stop at four seven one six. Mark for eighteen twelve, we got a one thousand two hundred five thousand. And eighteen sort of five grid out contact on left of eight. Direct PV, that's got to be Los Angeles. That's a DOTS 2. Okay, we're 155 miles from the Los Angeles VOR. Start to set it about right there, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the descent page. Forecast. Back to Sky to give me a whole lot to work with here.
Well, we can go to 11 and 79 and 600. Let's start it at 37. Five. Last time I did this, I screwed up. I entered the wrong airport. It was supposed to be San Francisco and had KLX. I was lucky. I'm not going to put the uh, deviation uh, 1016. Throw that up here. We'll go ahead and uh, fill in the rest of it. 58 to 22. 140 at 5. All right, we currently weigh 127,700. Currently have 9.5 in the fuel tank. So what I could do is go to the progress page and cruise page, 7.1, 7.1. So if I was to take, uh, let's see here, 9.5, Subtract that from 7.1. I get 2,400 pounds. So if I were to subtract that, 128.6, I would get 126.2. Estimated landing weight. And that will show 139 and flaps 30. So I'll select that. Headwind component in Los Angeles, not over 10. So half of that's five, so we're good at plus five. So that being said, we trigger dry. Set the auto brakes to three. The altimeter currently in Los Angeles is. 3001. I'll save that. Missed approach will fly a heading of 236, the intercept of 195, allowed to and it'd be a direct entry. I've already done this, did that, got that, that, no, I didn't enter that. Runway 25, this is strict set. Decision height, this is a, an auto land, but we're going to go ahead and go with Barrow. I think it's 107.
RVR 6, RVR 12, decision height, radar altitude 107. Go radio radio altitude. Just in case the outer land doesn't work, we can go to cap two. Nav frequencies are set. Course is 251, altitude bug. Well, we're not ready yet for that. We start heading down. We'll... Now landing performance, I use this one. Five left. We'll update. Well, let's see. What is the actual conditions down there? Twenty-six. It's a little bit time-consuming. Ah, uh, the altimeter: two nine nine one, three zero zero one. Well, actually, no. I don't have to do that. This might. This might work. Let's say round off to 126. Come in a little heavier. More than enough. Quite a ways out, 101. It'd be a good time to start a slow descent, but we've got a little ways to go. Just under 8,000 feet. Cabin altitude, never want to go over 8,000. Differential pressure's out of the yellow. And we're zero on the climb. All looks in order. bit of traffic, not much. I've got the traffic global turned way down. Okay, let's say they want us to descend the flight level 270, south with 593, descend, maintain flight level 270. I will say Flight level 270 from 37, something with 593. So I'm going to go ahead and set the altitude. Start heading downhill. I'm going to go ahead and go to level change. Bring her down to 27,000. speed as long as I'm going at least 2,500 feet a minute that's, that should be adequate
think they might say uh, Southwest 593 contact so called 127.40. 127.40. See you later. Then I'll dial that in and check in. Okay, 12897. We'll try that. Uh, Find something recognizable here. Southwest 593 descended out of 37 to 27. Southwest 593, Roger. Inter American 438, 14.4, landing. Uh, via the set of 230, and uh, we're restricted to 259. 3430, and uh, Roger, what's your normal case? 300. Which I'm probably going to do too. I'm probably going to be at 300 knots. 288. You see the speed going up as we're getting lower and lower. angle below 30,000 can be as high as 25, 30 max. And you can see we're way, way below the profile. If you go to descent page, we're 8,000 below, so we're not going to have any problems. Level out for a little bit, fly into it. A thousand to go. And I like to slow down to about a thousand feet a minute when I get close to my descent altitude, so I don't trigger a TCAS alarm. Number five four ten at Echo Traffic One at the Frickin' Bubble Box and about one zero miles out the direction of Sears on one thousand. Let's anticipate what's the next altitude we're possibly going to get here. Flat level 210 or above. Let's say they allow us down to flat level 210. Let's say 23.
close enough. Okay, 23,000 will be our next set. Vertical NAS getting a little ahead of itself. Three hundred knots is about right. Okay, it's 280 knots, so I'm going to have to get her down to about 280. That's a restriction. Got it okay to descend to flight level 230. Flight level change again, indicated airspeed 280 knots. Expecting maybe 19,000. 280 knots. Okay, 
A reference there. I'm going to stay outside that 25 mile ring. Temperatures between minus 10 and plus 10. We're hitting in some clouds here. Engine anti ice is on. Engine start valves are supposed to be continuous when you're running out. Southwest. Say we've been cleared down to 17,000. Southwest uh, 503, Senate maintained. 17,000. Shorten this up a little bit. Put that in the bullpen. Thousand to go. Madness to my method. Light level change. Up to 770 is up. 
Out of flight level 34, descending via the uh, Ola 1, uh, level off, flight level 240. Out of 770, at Center Cross Cindy, had to maintain 1 2000, time off 700, 200, 907. Cindy, uh, flight level 120, cross Delta 770. Now we're right back on the profile, just slightly above it. Southwest 593, maintain Idiot light telling me I don't need this. That was blocked Descending from uh, 13 to 7,000, 250 knots. Seal Beach. Half flight 1045, descending to 8,000. Down to 8,000, half flight 1045. Half flight 1045, connect to 1245.35. point here I want everybody strapped in. We're heading in. Get the heading ready. Your pump shell on. Hey, sorry, your pump shell. Thank you. Cross the river three zero zero zero. Three zero zero zero. Your pump shell. Now we start turning on some lights. Ah, turn that on so I don't forget. Thank you. 
Southwest 593, turn right heading uh, 070. Right 070. Center maintain 7000. 070 down to 7000, Southwest 593. Downwind. 522, Max 77. 522, do not see Max 77. 1000 to go. Hope you need to lose two minutes on your arrival time. Max 76. Control, good to have our uh, Omni 302 out of 17,000 for 16,000. Omni 302 up and right. November 850, Charlie, back in the weather and totem for Imperial. You can expect a visual approach. Yeah, I'll expect a visual, I'll just try to get it, can't get it quite yet, so all the time. Another thing I can do. Delta 1025, defend and maintain 1 2000, San Diego altimeter 3000. Use that for a reference. Okay, we're picking up the ILS. Southwest 593 descent and maintain flight level 5000 feet. Turn left heading 320. Down to 5000 left to 320. Actually, 90 degrees, whatever that is. Let's say 3. 320 is about right. 330. Southwest 593, slow speed to 210. Now he tells me. Turn left heading three zero zero. Left three zero zero. Basically, all I did is just steer us onto the localizer. Oh, I got that course dialed in there. Then, what I can do is this update this. Gives me a better reference point. Let it slowly descend. Let's say there's a plane here and there's a plane there and there's a slot to get me in. 
Sierra Alaska 250 out of uh, 339 descending uh, via the uh, Oro arrival. So you look at Fly to where you see him get it down as low as 2200 feet within 10 miles. That's coming from the north side. And now let's say uh, Southwest 593, turn under it's 280. Left 280, maintain 210. I can do that. Omni 302, the center maintain 14,000, and the March altimeter 2995. And 14,000, 2995, Omni 302. Let's set this to the approach. Double check, we're set, no, 0590. Uh, VOR or of course, it's match 251. Imperial VOR, there's a pop charge. Right. And we are receiving an identification. Indiana Lima Alpha X-ray, which is uh, course 251. How's our weight? 1,000 to go. Pretty close. Okay, well, level at 3,000, intercept the localizer and the ILS. Clear direct KU. All right, present position, direct to uh, taking the point. We're a, little, to we're a little further out, so let's go ahead and uh, turn on final. Might have overshot it a little bit. Not by much. Center Delta 7292 out of 293 for Mo Mark 40. Just a little Delta bit to the right. After Mo Mark, Direct Trixie. After Mo Mark, Direct Trixie. A little, a little bit to the left here to intercept that. Let's assume we've been clear to land. Uh, All right. Go ahead and try the localizer and see if she grabs it. Normally you're supposed to do this on the right side. Okay, flaps one speed, 180 knots to within five miles. Copy 302, contact approach on 134.0. Go ahead, set the missed and approach on. We'll do that after we get below it. It's actually 2,000 feet. 2,500. Check. Contact tower. We've already done that. Final recall. So 
Okay, yeah, that's dropping the flaps 5 speed. Approaching 5 miles. Just the approach altitude is 2,000 feet. Lights on, auto brakes on, seatbelt signs on. Slowing to 170, 176. Flap 15, gear down, bug down. Flashing lights. San Diego altimeter 3000. Flaps 30. VRF. Auto land set. 1,000. 1,000 feet stabilized, Mr. Birch altitude set. Look, Ma, no hands. Been a while since I did one of these. Now, on this type of landing, you don't disconnect the autopilot and the auto throttle. It's supposed to do it. This is the uh, op, uh, yeah, operational, not passive. So I won't even have to do the flare. You'll hear the. I've already got the flare. 700. What's to call that? Cross check. Check. It will literally land itself in a relatively calm wind. Oh, there you can hear the trim pitching the nose. It's going to pitch the nose up automatically. I won't even have to do that. right on Jared Juliet. Okay, turn the lights off. Turn that off. Turn everything off you don't need. Track the flaps. Radars, transponder to altitude off. Hotel to Juliet, Southside 593. I think it's hotel. And the auto brakes off. November 8, Romeo Bravo, descend and maintain 12,000. Column altimeters, 2997. the four units. 997, 12,000, 268. And they're uh, going to give us Bravo to Charlie 7. First, we've got to get down there. Flight directors come off. November 0, Papa Charlie, just going to maintain 8,000. I don't mess with the cabin lights, air speed bugs. Yeah, I gotta set those down to 100. Plus one. 
November 8th, Romeo Bravo. That's done. Contact to approach on 125.3. 25.3 for 268, Romeo Bravo. And we'll start the APU after we cross the street. And we got a hold short here. Get permission to cross. And we have permission to cross. Right on Bravo to Charlie 7. Something about under 3. Delta 1792, descend and maintain 12,000. Descend and maintain 12,000, Delta 1792. Clear left, clear right, turning right. Bravo to Charlie 7. Charlie 7. Center, zero pop Charlie, I'd like to cancel IFR, remain flat falling. November zero pop Charlie, IFR cancellation received, and maintain on your present swap code, flight falling. Present code, zero pop Charlie. I guess I can listen to ground. Is anything down on ground here? What's going on here? Delta 1792, contact approach on 124.35. 1435, Delta 1792. There we go. Passing Charlie 9, let's go ahead and turn on the APU. Hold down for about a second. I don't know what was it. 44.3, turn left on Lima, taxi to ramp one. Alright, left on Lima, taxi to ramp one for drive. I don't know what's with this thing. Landing is great. It should have been excellent. I didn't do anything, I didn't land it. Don't blame me. Weren't my landing. Box 1524, turn right, dive away, echo, then via echo. All I did was stop. Monitor to ground control frequency to parking. Steer it when the wheels hit. Over on the park box for 19. You know, I actually get excellent landings when I don't use it. Dash one, where will you be parking? Okay, Charlie 7. Monitor to ground control frequency to north gate via Fox shot. Alpha, Echo, and Romeo. I can go ahead and kill the uh, number two engine. Alpha, turn to the scene of the crime. Piedmont 6180, just get rid of that. Traps off you right there, then make a right on Mike, cross 27 right, uh, and contact ramp to Spot Niner. Now we'll give way to the 175 and then cross 27 right, and contact ramp to Spot Niner. Okay, Charlie 7,
ground, storm of 5 1, flight of 2, we are clearing the active taxi to the pits. Storm 5 1, ground taxi to the pits via Papa. To the pits via Papa, storm 5 1, flight. Okay, that's that. Alright, engine page. Drops below 20, I can shut off the anti collision. Going 363, minus 1.9.1. Let's get everybody off. Okay, there we go. Clear doors, please. Settle down, settle down, settle down. Hold up. Let me open the doors first. My, my, my. Let's get some air going here while we're waiting on the ground power. Recommend it's 905. That's the departure end across. On my T6 right, going back here to ramp one. Excellent. Bullshit. That was excellent, too. Hello. American maintenance 905 at the departure end. Cross on my 26 right, join Victor to ramp one. Cross the big right, Victor to one, Mega Man 905. I'm there 5344, join in Mike from ramp five. Mm -hmm. 5344, Mike to five, behind us, 67 on lane. Mike five, uh, behind us, up five on lane, my there 5344. Ground of 1917 approaching one south of Yankee. The 1917 round, number two, sir, Mike, actually, Lima, Lima, Charlie. Okay. Lima, Lima, Charlie, just 1917, you. That's pretty much where it needs to be for turn around. We'll just leave it there. I think the next stop would be Phoenix. I'll try to do another uh, uh, RNAV, LNAV, VNAV, only without the. Well, actually, it is with the. Uh, Wasp receiver, but it's not the same as a G bass. I'll be using an LPV minimum on that approach. All right, so what have we done? We've done a G bass approach. We've done a uh, Auto Land Cat Three. So I guess that's all that's left to demonstrate. The Zybo 737 X Plane 11. 737 X Plane 11. Now we'll go ahead and terminate this. Dallas 3533, taxi ramp. Grand for 2433, taxi ramp. Dallas West 3533, taxi ramp. Southwest 2433, behind the Dallas 57, taxi ramp 3. Grand 3 behind the Dallas 13-02 I think that's how you do it. I hardly ever use this thing. Can't get all the frequencies I want. I tried, uh, for example, let's try LAX. You have to look for it. You got 18 on the ground. 47. Uh, guess I had that one already. How about uh, it's at 346, still not fitting a 160, maintain 1 1000. 160 ahead and climb to 1 1000, except at 346. Well, that's not bad. It's more than I had in San Francisco. Okay, so there's that. So there it is. What else can I think of?
As always, thank you for watching. See ya later.